I first came to Palm Beach in the 40s as a schoolboy for a penny on a double-decker bus. So I have travelled here over those years. I attended the opening of the Monavale Bus Depot and I came here in a double-decker at Latian bus with the then Minister for Transport, Milton Morris, and Bob Askin opened the bus depot. I've been Minister for Transport and I did the bus review for the uh, car government in 2003. And in the, bus, in the bus review I recommended that they set up bus corridors and they put up frequent service buses. So having done all that, I can't argue with the B-Line as a bus service. But there are aspects to the B-Line that we have to safeguard against. And the real concern that I have is that the B-Line to Mona Vale is a Trojan horse. And the 20th of March this year is the day that they deposited the Trojan horse in Mona Vale. Those of you that were involved in the Mona Vale plan will know what they have in mind for Mona Vale. The administrator from the eastern suburbs said, this place is dead at night. We need to bring more life to Mona Vale. Well, we don't want King's Cross in Mona Vale. That's very clear. We're very happy with the way things are at the present moment. And I pay tribute to those pioneers of this area who back in the days of Warringah Council fought to separate the northern beaches from Warringah and establish the Pitwater Council. And for many years we've enjoyed the benefits of having our own council. And we've enjoyed the benefits of having local people elected to that council looking after the interests of the people who live in this part of uh, the northern beaches. But that's all been taken away from us. The bad government with their amalgamation of councils on the northern beaches has taken that away from us. And they've done it in every other part of the state except the country areas. After they lost the Orange by-election they then realised we better hold off in the country. But they didn't stop. They didn't stop in the city. And one would have thought that when Baird went that uh, Gladys would have taken another view of that proposal but she hasn't been allowed to by the conservative forces that are behind her. She's kept the amalgamations going. Who benefits from those amalgamations in larger councils? Ask yourself. It's the developers. It's the people, the money interests that come to these areas that want to make money out of us. 20 Bungan Street is only the start. If you complained about 20 Bungan Street 20 or 30 years ago, wait until we're surrounded here by six-storey buildings and more. I was just saying a little while ago, I grew up in Canterbury. I've only been here for 20 years on the northern beaches, but I grew up in Canterbury. And when I go back to Canterbury and Campsie and see the development, the overdevelopment that has taken place on Canterbury Road, it breaks my heart. And who caused that? Canterbury Council. Now you've got to ask yourself, why? Well, of course, they've been dismissed. And that's probably the only council I agree with that's been dismissed because of what they've done along Canterbury Road. And if you really want to see what the future of Mona Vale could be, go to Canterbury, go to Campsie and see what's, what's happening. That is the future. We don't want that in Mona Vale. So while we're here today, I think it's important that you go home and you mark on your calendars 20th of March because that's the day that the Trojan horse arrived in Mona Vale. Now what we have to do into the future is come together as a group. Forget your politics. Politics has got nothing to do with what happens here in Mona Vale. We have to come together and ensure that in September, when a council is elected for the Northern Beaches, that we get people on that council who are interested in the well-being of the people who live here. Not the people who are fronting for developers, who are only interested in making money out of overdevelopment. So they're the issues that we've got to consider today. And I'm glad that we've been able to get people together today at such short notice, because you all indicate that you're, you're concerned about what's happening in your area. Now, I was asked about what is happening for people who live no north of uh, Mona Vale. Does the beeline stop here? Well, at the present time, there's no indication from anything that I've read they're going to change the L90 and the L88. People will still be coming down from north of uh, Mona Vale on those services. But have a look at the document. Have a look at the B line. There's a dotted line 
The dotted line heading in the direction of Newport. And quite frankly, if the people in Newport and Avalon think they've been spared, have another thought. Because once you get the B line to here, it's a very simple issue to take it further north. I remember as Minister for Transport, someone said to me, you can't get bendy buses through the Avalon, uh, through the Bilgala Bends. That's what they said. Well, they're getting through there, but just a few little adjustments. Now, these double-decker buses uh, that uh, they're proposing, they'll give you a nice ride. So you'll be able to see the view from upstairs if you can get a seat, because that's the issue. <coughs> when I attended the first meeting here uh, in Mona Vale, when we were talking about this project, I pointed out, why are you stopping at Manly Vale? And they said, because there are people there who want to travel. I said, if the people at Manly Vale want to travel, let them get the other buses, because if they get on at Wynyard and take up a seat, they'll be sitting there from Manly Vale onwards and the people from the northern beaches will be standing up, <coughs> because there's no need for them to stop at Manly Vale. How is that going to improve the timetable if they, if they add another stop? This thing hasn't been properly thought out. The people that turned up that first night here, I said to them, have you read the Unsworth report? The one I did in 2003. We've never heard of it. I thought, well, what sort of researchers are you? Like, you come here to the northern beaches, you don't live here, you don't travel on the buses like we do, and you're going to do all these plans for us. So there are deficiencies in the current B-line proposal. But quite frankly, there's nothing you can do. This is like down here, all the, all the plants are in, uh, in Park Street. This will be like the invasion of Normandy for, over the next two or three weeks. And my only concern is they get it all done before Anzac Day because it'll be a disgrace to the Pitwater RSL if they can't come down here on Anzac Day without all this rubbish uh, uh, in their sight. So that, friends, I'm glad you're all here today. I think today is the day where we've got to start to ensure that in the campaign that leads to the election of the Northern Beaches Council, we get people from amongst you who are concerned about the issues that affect us living here. Elect the right people of that council and make sure that the developers don't get hold of Manly Vale, uh, Mona Vale, as they have done with other locations uh, in Sydney. Thanks for coming along. It's going to start raining, which is uh, something that the people who get off the bus line, the B line bus, uh, here will enjoy if they get off on a wet day, they'll have to walk through the park in the rain. Could I ask for three cheers for Barry? Thank you. Thank you. Well, Barry, can we say so? What do you say? How do, from now on, what do you recommend that we do? Is it worth writing well, to any? What should we do? I think the Save Mona Vale group have got to stick together. They've got to get as many people as possible involved and you've got to ensure that in the run-up to the election of the Northern Beaches Council, we get the right people elected, people who are concerned for the community. There are, there are long-serving uh, councillors here present today. They can advise. But I think we can't just sit back. We can't just look at the computer and see, whoa, isn't that terrible? We've got to get involved. And at least they've given us six months' notice to get involved and ensure that the campaign is successful and we get people elected who are going to look after us. That's the answer. Barry, as a former Premier, do you consider there's any chance of people to regaining its independence? There are, there are a lot of people who are very unhappy. I mean, you talk to the good uh, citizens of Hunters Hill. Yes. Uh, well, Mossman, Hunters Hill, all those places, they're not happy. If Manly uh, and, uh, and Mossman w fell over because of the amalgamations there, and we've got a candidate here with us. If, 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 if that happened, I'm sure Gladys would be having a very big rethink. Yes. And that there, there should be <coughs> some coordination between the opposition groups who are opposed to their amalgamations to try and get the whole thing turned over in the metropolitan area. Uh, that was happening, but if you recall at the time, the council administrators and the public servants running the council all got promoted into high paying jobs, mm -hmm. they said, oh no, it's too late, we've sort of changed all the paperwork. Well, it's not too late. No. Uh, it was never too late to set Pickwater up. Can I just say one thing before yeah. I go? I am standing as an independent candidate in the seat of North Shore. I am on Mossman Council. 
every single time the government has made a change on the forced council amalgamation issue, it's been a political decision. Walker was exempt because Barnaby Joyce got involved. Cabon and Oberon were exempt because Phil Donato from the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers won that election. We believe in the North Shore, Mossman, North Sydney Council are stridently against forced amalgamation. If we can get an independent up and shake that tree and get right on top of the government, there is a chance that this will be another political decision. The whole thing has been political, we know that from day one. It's nothing about better services and better this and better that. It's all political, it's all about big development. In the future, getting off the bus here, you will be wet. You'll get your feet wet. They might put an extra path or two through here to make it easy, but as we see it now, it will be gone. Be gone forever. And where is the pick-up point? If you, if you want somebody to meet you at the bus stop, Along here, is there any arrangement? There's no, I haven't heard any information to say that we're going to have a, a pick up point here for cars, for passengers in this park. There's nothing planned at all. They expect you to walk across Pitwater Road, or across Park Street, and away from the area uh, to, 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 get, to get a lift. What's happening to people at Avalon? Are they just having to change buses here? No, we don't know. No, that, no, it, no, it's no. all cabinet inconfidence at no, the moment. No, but look, they, they, they will keep the L88 and the L90 going. Oh, will they? Well, yeah. But what, if, you, if you look at all this stuff online, there's a dotted line uh, north of Mona Vale. They will run the thing up to Newport and Avalon, and they will do the same job they're doing here on your infrastructure up there because uh, they'll have plans for Newport, they'll have plans for Avalon, and, uh, and, but you'll be just down the track. Yeah. So, but in the, in the short term, in the medium term, you'll have the buses that we've been giving to Palm Beach for as long as I've been alive. I make the point that this group is not really indicative of the huge amount of anger in the area. It's a work day, so the, a lot of people are at work and it was short notice. So don't think that this is an indication of the extent of the anger. Pitwater is furious about this. I have 8,000 hits just last night on my Facebook site. Just, I know this is a, a separate topic, but it is linked to the anger in the area. My mother, Dr. Daly, fought very hard to save Motorville Hospital. Obviously there wasn't, how do we get our voices heard more? How do we actually make something happen? Because they're just laughing. They referred to us Northern Beaches people as not knowing what's good for us. Yes. Who do they think we are? We don't know what's good for us. So this has gone out of the area. Are these politicians even linked to the Northern Beaches? They don't care, they want to destroy it. It's about money. I know Caroline said it was about politics, but what is politics? Is that different from business? How much money are they getting under the table? No, it needs to be heard. How do we get our voices out there? I used to be Minister Sorry. for Health as well. Okay. But today, <laughs> today I'm Minister for Transport. Yeah. This is a more pressing issue, what we've got here. Absolutely. Today. My mum told me to be here. I wish she could have been here. I'm very passionate she's about work, it. Isn't she? She's yeah. at work, saving <laughs> lives. I, I wish there was more people from my age group here. I want to make more noise. I want to get out there on my Facebook page. I'll do whatever it takes. We need to stop it. likelihood that this V-Line will become a privatised service and uh, Montevale bus depot be uh, collapsed and we only have Brookvale. If I was putting money on it, I would say that they're going to privatise the V-Line. And you've got uh, Mr Falinski down the road who said putting the putting the, the uh, V-Line in the charge of the Montevale uh, uh, State Transit Authority be like putting uh, Dracula in charge of the blood bank. Yeah. Well that shows how much he knows and I'd like to see him on the L90. I don't, I've never laid eyes on him. In fact, I've only seen Gladys on the bus since she got elected. I mean, <laughs> as, as a former politician, I can tell you, you get votes if you travel on public transport. So as far as Falinski is concerned, he better get on the bus. Because I'm, I'm, I'd like to run a campaign, bring back Bronwyn. <laughs> Well, I think I think we've done enough. To... Bring back Barry. But someone yeah. made a good point. Someone made a good point. We should reconvene this meeting on a Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Now, now while while this while the bulldozers are hot, I'd be happy to come back next Saturday, right. and, and 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 rerun today's meeting to a larger group. Yeah. And and the main thing is get the message out. Now the Manly Daily's here, so if they could indicate to the to the uh, constituency out here that we're going to have a big protest meeting here next Saturday morning at whatever time you decide, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, let's come back together on Great Saturday idea. and let's show the Northern Beaches how many people are angry. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's the boss is speaking.
I love the bars, I've just been as well. <laughs> what I want to know is the meeting on Saturday is going to be just about the bee line or is it going to include the overdevelopment that you would expect of Mona Vale from that meeting? I, I think clearly that's the issue, Pauline. It's got to be, the bee line is just the start of what they're trying to do to Mona Vale. And that's well, the bulldozing of Mona Vale Hospital. Nobody knows about it. The Manly yeah. Daily hasn't even printed that yeah. Rob Stokes is bulldozing the hospital yeah. to the ground. Yeah. Right, well, so we... if that could be included, well, yes, he's yeah, bulldozing well... the hospital to the ground. Thank well, we you all for coming to today. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know someone who might. And the transport yeah. up to... Yeah. Hey, just hang on. This is Manly Daily. Where, where do you want to be? If you would mind standing I'll stand there, here, then yeah. I'll get everybody Don't move. Don't move.